and welcome to Behind the Science, where we ask challenging questions directly to the scientists who are trying to solve today's toughest problems. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. I don't know about you, but when I read about protein quantification, I always hear all these terms, bottom-up analysis, top-down, middle-up, middle-down. Boy, do I get turned around trying to figure out which is which. So in this episode of Behind the Science, let's take a look at the bottoms-up approach for protein quantification. I have a feeling it has nothing to do with beer, but I can always be hopeful. Hi, Erin, I'm so glad I found you. I've been doing some protein digestion work lately, but what I really need to do is protein quantification. And I was referred to you because I feel like I'm in a little over my head. And I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit. Well, you've come to the right place. Okay. Basically, all we do in our lab is protein and peptide quantification. Okay, great. Yeah. And in fact, we've been doing this for probably eight years now, and we've recently really streamlined it and refined it. Now, I don't know if you know that one of the reasons people do this is to either look at up or down regulation of biomarkers, or we try to study pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics of drugs. Oh, the other thing that's interesting is that over the past few years, there's been a real growth in large molecule quantification. So this is sort of what led us to research heavily in this area. Now, there are a few common techniques that people use. So if you'd like, I can show you. That'd be great, thank you. All right, Jen, so let me explain this to you a little bit more detail. So there are basically two methods for doing protein quantification. Ligand binding assays, or a lot of people call them LBAs, and LCMS. Now, the thing is, well, LBAs are very high sensitivity, high throughput, and they use very small sample volumes, there are some serious limitations. So some of these are around you know, cross-reactivity, the very long development times, you know, it can take six months to a year, the fact that it's difficult to multiplex, and that they have a really um, short, limited uh, linear dynamic range. So you're talking maybe an order or two of magnitude. So you start to see where LCMS has some significant benefits. And for those of us that have been doing it forever, you know, we can really appreciate the improved accuracy and precision, the fact that you can multiplex very easily, distinguish analogs, distinguish metabolites, closely related compounds, degradation products. It's got a very broad linear dynamic range, four to five orders of magnitude, and very quick method development time. So you might be talking a week or two. So how does that sound? Aaron, LCMS sounds great. So can you tell me more about this bottoms up approach? Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, Jen, don't you mean bottom up? I guess. Yeah, you can put your beer glass Doesn't down. Have anything Sorry. To do with that? Okay. No, no. Okay. What we're really talking about here is a method of doing protein quantification whereby we actually digest the protein into its peptides. Okay. And then we select a signature peptide as a representative for the protein and we monitor that peptide. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense, but it sounds a little complicated. Can you show me this in more detail? Yeah, perhaps it's better if I draw it out for okay, you. All good. right. All right, Jen. So let me explain this bottom-up approach to you in a little bit more detail. So if we draw it out here, you're typically starting with a protein or sometimes a peptide in plasma or serum. Now I want to go through the protein workflow with you here. Then you've got the option to do some cleanup at the protein level and that might be in a protein A, protein G, even an anti-human affinity. Some folks do a precipitation and then do pellet digestion. And then, but about 50% of the people don't even do any cleanup at that level, they just take the whole plasma. So then we've got our purified protein or our whole plasma sample, and this is when we do the digestion. Now, while it looks pretty simple on the workflow here, you can appreciate there's a lot that goes into that. Denaturation, reduction, alkylation, the um, digestion reagent ratios, there's a lot that goes into that. After that, we end up with our peptides. So here's where we get those representative peptides, those surrogates, and that's sort of that bottom-up approach. Next, after that, you have a choice of whether or not you wanna clean up at the peptide level. So say you need additional sensitivity, you wanna get rid of some of the digest reagents, salts, things like that, then you might clean up at the peptide level as well using something like a mixed mode SPE. Finally, you've got your purified peptides and you take them over to LCMS and then ideally you get some good data out of it. So what do you think? Wow, that does sound pretty complicated though. There seems like there are a lot of choices that could lead to variability. 
Well, it is a pretty complicated process, lots of steps and everything, but you know, the end result is that you've got the sensitivity and the specificity that you need. Okay, well at least now I know what the bottom up approach is and it's not the method I was thinking of. Not quite, Jen, sorry about that. That's okay. If you're interested, next time maybe you can talk to some of the folks that work in my lab about how we've managed to simplify this. That sounds great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Well, I have to admit that I'm a little disappointed that the bottoms up or bottom up approach is not exactly what I thought it would be, but it does look like a valuable approach for protein quantification. Good news is that Erin told me on the way out of the lab that she has done some pretty comprehensive webinars on this topic. So check out the links below to learn more about the surrogate peptide approach and get additional information. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science.